going to pause the recording while we're waiting. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Janae. Um, does anyone have any questions about that announcement um, or the reporting from Officer Gillespie? Okay. Thank you, Officer. Um, okay. And um, Eric Johnson, did you have anything to share for the group? I don't know if he's... Hey, how are you doing? Um, I'm actually one of the new residents that's coming into the community, so I'm listening. Oh. And, yes, I'm at 2022 Linden. Welcome. Welcome yes. to the neighborhood. Good to see a new face. I hope it's Welcome not... to the neighborhood. Yes. Thank you. I'm just yeah. waiting on this construction to finish up and I'll be there. <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations on your new home. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so um, I know there was quite a few things that happened in the realm of planning and development. So I was wondering if anyone would like to share back on 20, um, 2001 Park Avenue or any other development um, news for the good of the group. No, I saw Rolando, you went off mute. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. Nope. <laughs> I received, uh, um, where's my phone? I do the gentleman's name. I received an email from, um, oh, I'm having a. They, they went. Phone. They went with Marbray. Say it again. They went with Marbray. They went with Marbray. Yes. Yes. For... Right. Yes. Right. So that's what, in reference to twenty or one, um, Park, the um, controller made a decision of the presentation that we had a couple of months ago. Also, Harlan sent me a little summary that I want to try and briefly give to y'all. Um, basically, um, Madison Park North construction is going on. Basically, what I've been observing is that they're removing the foundation of those properties that's there. That's why you see all those um, mounting of debris and stones. Um, 701, 707, Jewel Parkway Drive, uh, the BMZ hearing, they had it and um, it was approved for them for the variance that it was asking for. Also, um, the, we had a recent sale and renovation going on on Jewel Park, I mean, Brooks Lane, 834 through 830. Um, one property was listed as a multifamily and uh, works was being conducted without permits. So- uh, It was sold as a multifamily, even though the city has it registered as a single family. So- uh, And when the realtor listed it, he listed it as a multifamily. So of course, expect in the future that, yeah. A lot of multi-units in the neighborhood. Um, email was sent to our representative. Angular parking and the north part of Utah Place, as we all are aware, as soon as it passed, um, White Lock, it's open up to a speedway. And um, I've seen it myself where cars end up going above 25 miles an hour. And also recently, apparently, there was an accident on White Lock and Jewel, Jewel Park. I mean, Jewel, uh, Jewel Hill. I noticed a bumper was out there uh, yesterday. And a lot of car debris was there. So it was a recent accident around there. Um, and also we have here 2026 Linden building that's have fire damage and a 
email was sent to our city representative. That's what Harlan sent to me to give you all in for PDC issues. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do you have anything in for historic? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh no i don't have anything actually um historic basically we have a couple of new um atp that was sent unfortunately lauren is extremely busy i got a call earlier from someone today in reference to one of his ATP that was sent and um can you explain for our neighbor what an ATP is just oh, in case for people that might be new to the meeting uh, um, <laughs> uh, authority to proceed you know authorization to proceed that's what it is um there's basically you put in application and you tell the um chap as to what your project won't be they review it um, and they'll give you approval or tell you what needs to be corrected that meet CHOP guidelines. So um, she's been very busy working on certain projects and certain things for the city. And uh, that's why she's been extremely busy. I contacted her today, but she was in a meeting with the commissioner. So she wasn't able to get back to me. So I'll try and touch bases with her tomorrow. And, and that's basically it. Follow up on that. I really do. Um, I'm at 2022, so 2026 is two doors down. So appreciate that, really do. You're welcome. Wonderful. Okay, um, thank you so much. Any other um, um, board member want to share? I know that we had, um, two really big events last month that I don't think we necessarily reported out on um, the movie night. Um, and then actually, I think that was the big event um, that might have had financial implications. I don't know if we need to do any kind of financial update, um, but any other um, board members feel free if, if you have anything to share. Hi, it's Janae. Uh, before we move away from the um, planning and development, uh, just a quick question and perhaps an update for uh, those folks that aren't aware, but for the Marbre, I'm pronouncing it correctly, refresh my memory related to what they were proposing. Mount so, Royal Marketplace. Was, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mount Royal uh, yes, Marketplace. It, yes, that was the marketplace. So there's a potential that we will have a food hall um, or much like um, our house in the neighborhood in, in some near future. So that I think was a really exciting prospect for a lot of people that joined that meeting. Um, I'm sure we can share out the link to the video of their presentation so people can refresh their memories about exactly what they were proposing and the different kinds of businesses they were trying to pursue in that space. But yes, it's the food hall. Thank you so much. And then next steps, um, are, are we just kind of waiting to hear the next steps or do they share um, what is going to be happening moving forward? I think it would behoove us and all the organizations that were involved in organizing um, the, the meeting that Councilman Torrance um, hosted to have some follow-up conversations with them to get a sense of timeline and what the other pr processes and procedures are um, with the um, comptroller's office. Um, Arlen was our representative and he's not here. Um, and that was kind of a closed door type of um, conversation. So it would be nice now that the announcement has been made um, I think that they can share a little bit more. And chat just left in the chat um, the quote from the office, the comptroller's office, and it says, after an extensive and collaborative review process, the Department of Real Estate door is um, pleased to announce that the next step in the development of the property at 2001 Park Avenue, Marbury and Company Realty LLC will enter a 90-day exclusive negotiating privilege with the city of Baltimore. So I guess the deal could potentially still follow part 
Um, the ENP will specify the terms and conditions under which the city will negotiate the requirements and the deadlines for commencing and completing said negotiations and the terms and conditions under which the city will consider entering into a land disposition agreement, LDA, for the development of the property. Thank you, Chet. <laughs> I feel like a newscaster. <laughs> I'm getting prompt. No problem. <laughs> but um, yeah, it sounds like that will be a negotiation between them and the comptroller's office. But I'm sure as we have in the past, we can reach out to the comptroller's office and get more information at that point. So any other questions? Oh, and um, Melda placed a link in the chat about it. Um, Okay, so you guys can read that um, later and call. Thank you, Melda, and thanks everyone. Okay. Um, so, and off to Janae, yeah. Yeah. So my, my apologies for not having anything formally drawn up. It's been uh, the end of the year rush. <laughs> it kind of got me a little harried. But nonetheless, um, we did have movie night. Um, in November, we actually, I think we've had the other event that I'm not sure we reported out on, and forgive me if I'm repeating, but we um, partnered with uh, Umena uh, around Halloween on the 31st. So uh, I, it was a fun event uh, for all of the participants. Uh, per feedback that we've gotten, uh, lots of festivities, lots of balloons. Um, and so the neighbors really pitched in and came through. And I believe uh, Mike Cross Barnett is on the, the line. So a big thank you to him for um, everything. And we were able to support in the capacity of decorations and um, you know, being there to greet and take pictures. And we also supported through uh, securing a, a face painter for those that children that didn't necessarily have a uh, costume, children and adults. <laughs> so it seemed to be well received and uh, it was a nice time. Thereafter, maybe a, a week or so after, maybe a couple of weeks, um, we hosted uh, in partnership with Friends of German Park and Parkway Theaters, and a special thanks to St. Francis, a movie night with um, ooh, Maverick, what was the name of the movie? Top Gun Maverick, uh, which was really spectacular with all of the uh, professional equipment in German Park. Um, so we did have expenditures of along the lines of chairs, tables, generator, just little materials like that. Um, we also purchased a popcorn machine. <laughs> so we will be having popcorn for each and every event that we have going forward. <laughs> um, and then we also had materials for the concession stands. Um, I, uh, Chet, please forgive me, I don't recall, uh, so the, monies from the concession stands were turned over to finance. And I don't recall what the final number was. And I know I do owe you some additional back uh, information. I just don't have it with me right now, but I do have it available. Um, the, um, so the cash was 245. And I think there was also $25 paid via PayPal minus whatever the PayPal fees were. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to be well received and uh, we got a lot of great feedback um, regarding this event. And it was really amazing to work with Parkway Theaters. They were um, a great partner and we enjoyed working, um, bringing this forward with Friends of German Park. And again, a special thanks to St. Francis. Um, and so we also had the, our annual meeting. And so I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Keandra, uh, because I believe that, that will dovetail into our 
uh, next session if I um, heard you correctly. So back over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Janae. <laughs> um, so yes, we also on the same day had our um, big membership annual meeting, which was a really wonderful mix of folks that have never attended an RHA meeting before, um, folks that were new to the neighborhood and maybe a little bit curious about what RHA was and um, um, folks that have been in our meetings month after month. Um, so thanks for everyone that was able to attend that meeting. And um, the first half of the meeting we spent um, where we tried to check off as many things or mark off as much off of our bingo card so we could meet each other, meet our neighbors. And that was followed up by two workshops. Um, one workshop was in thinking through the RHA greet, greeting. So how do we welcome new members to the neighborhood? What would the process look like? How do we wanna make sure people feel welcome when they move here? And then the second session was thinking about how we could better communicate with developers um, and streamline. Um, I, I think our process is pretty streamlined, but improve um, the process of communicating with developers when they're seeking um, love letters of support um, to the BMZA or sometimes um, they'll also ask us to send in a letter of support to council, the councilman's office so that they can open up a, um, a council um, bill. And so um, the two groups split up, they thought through both of those things and had really robust feedback. And really that was a time to really um, consider how we could work better as uh, an association and what the purpose and the function of an association is. And just to um, demystify what we do as a board and as a body, that it's really neighbors just coming together, trying to do things for each other. And it's not, even though we do have a formal board and we have formal bylaws, um, at the end of the day, we're just each other's neighbors. And we probably have a lot more in common with each other. And I think that um, what was extremely helpful is one of our neighbors was going through the development process. And so I think the conversation was really helpful to understand um, why we address things the way that we do. Um, so that was the, the um, end of the year meeting. And I thought it was pretty, everyone left really happy. We had a lot of um, tweets and it was a really great uh, way to get to one another in my opinion. But of course I'm extremely biased. So <laughs> um, uh, the only other, before we um, segue into breakouts, which I think we have, we're losing people. So we only have about 10 people, which actually, or 11 people, um, including myself. So I think that would actually be okay to not break out and just to have an open conversation amongst each other. But um, the only two addition, the only things that I wanted to share with you is um, one, the support that we were getting from the um, the Neighborhood Design Center. I'm not sure if I reported that out last month or had an opportunity to do that, that uh, we were able to send in a, a letter to them saying that we would like to receive that support and funding for a neighborhood plan, um, a city approved neighborhood plan. So we're still waiting to hear they're, they're gonna get that um, funding from the city. So we're waiting um, to hear back about that. And um, I think the only uh, other piece of information that I wanted to share with everyone was about 2001 Park. I, I, nothing else is bubbling up and I share Jay in trying to get, as exciting as the holiday season is, December is rough <laughs> um, with my semester ending and, um, and then also heading into the holidays and just trying to make it through these weeks, um, but really excited for the holidays. So if I'm forgetting something, which I might be, I will try to make sure to communicate that to Daryl so that we can include it in a, in a newsletter. So, um, oh, sorry. The only other thing is that we were working on language around partnership and what partnership meant for RHA. Um, we haven't been able to meet as a board for a month because our last meeting kind of intersected with our board, like the timing of our um, community meeting kind of took the place of our board meeting. So um, hopefully next week we'll be able to get into that, but trying to think about um, helpful language that we could share 
other neighborhood organizations of the city that will um, clearly articulate what we're looking for in partnerships, what partnership means to us, um, because we found um, on multiple occasions that how we defined partnership and what it meant to partner is very different from organization to organization. So we thought it would be really healthy to articulate that in a way that's um, very uh, productive for everyone. So that's probably it. Anyone else have anything to share for the group? Anyone, It does. you don't have to be a board member, you can just be in the room. And if not, we can switch the second half of the meeting. Okay. Not necessarily <laughs> an additional update, but okay. I did, I, I um, wanted to thank you for uh, reminding us of the, the definition around partnership. I think it's going to be really important. We, we had a lot of great events uh, last year, but as we're moving forward for 2023, we have the opportunity to improve um, and optimize our, our processes and, and communicate proactively our expectations to kind of manage the whole process uh, in a transparent manner. Um, and I think it'll be helpful. I also wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, the chair of marketing. I forgot, you know, we had a lot and, and also the chair of the historic um, committee um, for their assistance on their unwavering assistance on movie night, as well as um, the webmaster. Um, so I just, you know, wanted to give a special shout out to everyone that assisted with not only that, but throughout the year, all of the different events that were heavy lifting. Um, and uh, um, so I wanted, I wanted to share that, even though I'm like scatter, <laughs> scatterbrained on everything else, but I wanted to share my thank yous. Thank you, Janae. Yeah. Kind of yeah I, you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I like to limit that thank you to the events uh, uh, chairman because they just did an incredible job on every event. So applause, Janae. It's yay, RHA. <laughs> Yeah, so we have an amazing team. I'm so we're all so lucky to be working with each other, honestly. Um, so many gifts in the room for sure. Um, and once we have more energy, I'm sure it would be wonderful to actually think of all that we did over the last 12 months because it's been a lot. Um, but uh, I know that we have all been doing a lot um, in our personal lives. Um, so we're not quite there, but hopefully in the new year, we can share with you all a summary of our, our past year. Um, but um, until then, we I would like to switch the conversation to looking ahead. And I think we kind of um, got into that a little bit. Um, we, um, sorry, we talked about some of the things. Can everyone see the whiteboard? Yes. Oh, cool. All right. Um, we talked about a lot of the things that um, we were talking about as far as um, thinking about our internal processes. Those are some goals that we have. But I was wondering if we could just spend some time um, with the group just to talk about um, the goals that we have for each other in the new year and for our community association. So um, um, if we could spend, I would say like 10 minutes, really, we don't have to spend a ton of time. I would like to end at eight, just sharing some goals um, that we might have for 2023 for um, our organization. So um, it can be big, it can be small, but um, I almost want you to consider this from the standpoint as just a neighbor, things that you might've seen in the neighborhood that you feel like really should be addressed or things that you've noticed about RHA that you think could be improved or is are going really well. So um, maybe I, I'm more of the, let's start with the things that can use work. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's start with the, we're gonna spend, let's say five minutes just talking about the things that we would like to work on. And then maybe we can end with the positive of the things that we think are going really well that we wanna continue. So, um, Anyone want to share? Anyone feel safe to share? No ideas too big or too small. Uh, 
Um, I can share. Cool. Um, so for um, for marketing, I envision a published marketing plan in the new year. Okay. Um, and so that uh, everyone can follow along and so that I can be accountable. Okay. And, um, and that for that plan uh, to you know, have the broad strokes um, and then uh, for the social media portion of the plan for it to um, be more granular um, so that we uh, utilize uh, analytics um, to uh, see our progress. Okay. So basically creating like measurable goals that you can track using the data that we're getting from like MailChimp or social media to, to yes. say, you know, whether you're meeting your goals or not. Okay, that sounds good. And it, it doesn't like anything that you share back doesn't have to be um, so, um, you know, they, they in that key, case, can I go again? Um, yes, go ahead. Um, I'm excited about, um, well, yes, I'm excited about um, reaching residents in the, um, in the, in the complex, the complexes, in the, in the apartment complexes, um, or uh, the towers, those size um, uh, uh, buildings, re residences, and um, uh, marketing is going to um, uh, invite individuals uh, for something like a, you know, a, a Friday meet and greet um, okay. in the to to be in the um, lobby of you know, a resident this month, uh, this week, another one, you know, two weeks later like that, because uh, we're gonna try some hand-to-hand -hand combat on picking up um, residents, residents from these uh, residential buildings. So that came out of the, um, out of our uh, meet and greet. Oh, awesome. um, and, uh, we, you know, we talked about our, um our new neighbor two houses down we greeted when they first moved in and uh we had a great exchange and um the events chair threw out there that she was the events chair but we'll get to that later and that resulted in a uh, brand new residents uh, coming to that meet and greet and um and you know, they said that you know the, the reason why they're there is because they were uh, uh, greeted by another resident, um, and that that's you know the the thing to make them feel uh, uh, a part of and to want to be a part of um, the organization as well. So, um, it, in order to make that happen for the um, residents in 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 these uh uh residential centers we're gonna we're gonna go to them okay so um so enacting what we have learned from our meet and greet that one on one neighbor greeting matters neighbor greeting <laughs> I feel like Dr. Seuss, but um, okay. And so one way that you're gonna do that is through um, doing these um, building wide efforts where you're gonna be um, meeting with neighbors in the buildings, like that's a priority. 
Okay, awesome. And I see someone in the chat. Can, do you mind um, speaking it out loud so we can not make people? I want people to feel comfortable speaking. Sure, I was just. But was, if you don't, okay. <laughs> sorry, just voicing my support of that idea. I think that's that's awesome, and I think that you know, um, you know, that, that's definitely something that I think about a lot. You know, from working with St. Francis, just trying to figure out how to reach um, and get the word out to, you know, people who might be a little less connected, you know, on social media, for example, or, or email. Um, but, you know, making those face-to-face -face connections, I think is really important. So um, I think that's an awesome idea and concept. And I'm, I, I'm excited to see how that pans out. Cool. All right. Awesome. So that's a point of follow up. We definitely would like to share um, with other organizations if it's how, how we can um, improve that communication with people that are being cut off by. I think it's hard because we do a lot of um, internet based and sometimes we'll do flyering. But even with that, it's very expensive to do door knocking, like printing wise, it's very expensive. So trying to figure out, I love this concept, one, because it's super personal, but also it seems maybe more effective than the ways that we've been trying to reach folks. So um, that's such a great idea, Daryl. Um, and anybody else? Now this can be like about the way um, you are receiving communications from the organization. It can even be about um, things that you're seeing on your block. It can be very block specific. Um, Okay, so I'll share one that I've heard people say um, that I did I wasn't as aware of, and that is um, that apparently residents that live on the on Linden but in front of Dorothy Height have had some serious issues in the morning um, with the way that students are dropped off. So I hope that RHA can work with those neighbors to come up with a solution with Dorothy Height, so more work. I guess overall in the big scheme is just more work with Dorothy Height and really figuring out how we can communicate and have a deeper relationship with them, which we've started. So I, I think I'll put one in the winds in that is that we've we started working with Dorothy Height. So I'm excited that we were able to do that. Um, and then I would say in the improvement is strengthen that, the, that relationship um, so that we can um, really work as um, liaisons between those neighbors and the school so that the, those frustrations don't really boil over. I'm sorry that I'm having trouble typing it, so that's why I went to handwriting, and probably no one can read this, <laughs> but it's, I'm trying my best. Okay, anybody else have anything? Yeah, yeah this is this is Mike. Um, this it connects to the the comments, the previous comments about communication and outreach. Um, so I, I'd love for one of our goals in the new year to be um, like to try to expand, you know, just the number of people involved in the organization and especially like the number who are engaged and actually like show up to the meetings. Um, because one thing that I, that is happening here and you see it a lot with volunteer organizations is like you really get the same kind of small no, number of people who who show up to these things i think like there's something a little bit weird about people like us who kind of like meetings and and <laughs> um i mean i think a lot of people would probably like rather walk on broken glass than like go to a meeting at you know seven at night or eight at night but seriously um you know uh, yeah, I think I, I'd like, you know, for us to kind of like brainstorm how to like, just how do we get people to like become more engaged with like wanting to be part of this process? 
as far as the mm -hmm. communication goes, like, I know this is like really difficult because I've, you know, I've worked in this area a lot, but, you know, I almost missed this meeting. Um, and right. I'm like, I've like, I'm a super engaged person and like, I had it on my calendar, but like, I wasn't really looking, you know, the reminder email, like, yes, there was a reminder email, but it came like an hour and a half before the meeting started. And I'm just thinking that like for most people, that's probably not enough time, you know what I yeah. mean? And like you probably actually to get people's attention and like their busy, busy lives, like you, you, you might have to do like two or three of those things, you know? And um, anyway, I, and everything, and, it, and it, that always put, puts work on someone, right? Right. Um, but, but, but just, um, yeah, um, I don't know what the, like the number of, of members we have is right now. Like, did that, were we able to add many during the year? Um, I'm not sure, honestly, because we have been without a secretary for, gosh, I think like six months, if not more. Right. So um, I think that's part of, the issue is that um, like the way that the board is supposed to be fully functioning, it's not currently. So, um, but I think it's absolutely right. We're super aware that like, you know, meeting announcements should go out way earlier um, and, you know, but things happen. So we, Obviously, I think, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Um, it's not a criticism. It's just a comment. No, no, no. Um, I'm not taking it that way. And, and yeah. then the last thing I was going to say was uh, on a positive note is like, I love the collaborative stuff that went on this past year that people have already mentioned. And like the Halloween party that Janae alluded to was like really a shining example of that because, you know, it was, you know, technically a UEMNA event, but RHA was very involved um what Janae you know and Daryl did in particular was fantastic and but then also uh in a way RHIC was involved because they you know were the fiscal sponsor of Upper Utah Madison with our grant administration and then as uh St. Francis Center was you know they we collaborated with them cross-promoting each other's Halloween events that that day. So it was really cool to see like so many different neighborhood entities come together like to promote each other's success. And I'd love to see even more of that. Yes. Yeah, I think that has been, I agree with you, a really big success for the organization is that we have collaborated with literally every organization in this neighborhood in some capacity. Um, in this past year. And so I think, um, you know, if I could bounce off of that in the improvement section, I think that's why we're so aware of why we need to find collaboration and partnership means to us. Um, because as we all know, um, working on a team, it requires more communication, right? And, and more clear um, explanations for what what's driving you to do what you're doing and how you can work together so i think um you know not to <laughs> not to shift your your win into an improvement but i think they're you know they're in really i don't i don't think um improvements by the way are negative i think they're very positive um so i think that's one thing you know to piggyback off of the continuing to collaborate yes absolutely because in essence rha is that's what we are here for is to collaborate. Um, and then I would say um, strengthen our communication about collaboration yep. would be great. So I wanted to piggyback off of um, what was said uh, around a couple of things. So, um, and I, I am in alignment with that. So I think for an area of improvement, I think that we could do a better job of connecting our events and activities back to driving membership and you know highlighting the opportunity for additional com committee work so you know the events are great hanging out with our neighbors are great 
um, but we also need to be um, getting, having more visibility around the organization and pulling more people in um, so that we can continue the good work. So I guess that leads to another area of improvement around branding. And I know we've started the process for that, um, but, you know, really making sure. Add that to the win, Janae. I'm going to add it to our win. <laughs> we have a logo. <laughs> we, we do. We absolutely do. And, you know, again, just tie, tying it all back, you know, name recognition, logo recognition, and then, you know, increasing uh, participation and membership. And um, then another area for improvement is around the, uh, and I say this as the events chair, but around delegating and delegating early on in the process. Ooh. Yeah, so, and that's, you know, um, I know that there are those that are really good at that. <laughs> Uh, but I want to pull through on that and kind of give other people an opportunity to see the behind the scenes and get exposure to, you know, things and, and how the process is organized. Um, because it's, it's, a, it's fun um, and it's something that I would love to be able to transfer or share with other people uh, and, you know, helping them to organize things in a safe space. Uh, so neighbors helping neighbors, but in a in a skill set uh, capacity. And for the win, um, I think that our newsletter is very informative, and it has been very helpful for me um, to stay on top of what is happening in the neighborhood. And so as Mike Cross Barnett was sharing about promotion of different events, I think the newsletter has done a, a really great job. And I know everybody has sent in content that can be, um, that has been visualized and uploaded um, uh, uh, for, you know, distribution on, um, uh, distribution on our, our newsletter. And then just one more yeah. um, events calendar. Uh, I did, I talked about it a lot this year, um, talked about the different opportunities. I think um, Daryl has been helpful in kind of talking through some of the different resources and options around it. Um, for me, you know, I was trying to get a Google calendar together, but, um, you know, just it might be there are other resources that give different functionality that allow for more dexterity around it. So it, it will kind of get put to the back burner. Uh, but nonetheless, I do think that it is an an area, maybe not necessarily an area for improvement, but just a, an item that has maintained its place on the wish list. Okay. Okay, and we are at time. So for those of us, I'm gonna stop the share. Um, for those of us who were not able to contribute um, or share some feedback, please, as always, feel free to reach out to us um, to share that. And you can always email the board at board at reservoirhillassociation.org or you can email us at contact at reservoirhillassociation.org with any um, feedback or about what we're doing as an organization or about the neighborhood. So feel free, this is not the only time that we'll do this, but I think it's feedback um, from everyone um, so that we can make sure that we maintain um, our responsiveness to each other and to our neighbors. Um, so with that, I don't want to keep you all much later. Um, so if there's nothing else from anyone else in the group, I'm gonna pause, <laughs> give it a second. All right, I will give you your evening back, uh, the rest of your evening. And um, I'm wishing you all a really happy holiday. 
We won't see each other again until the new year. So happy new year as well. And um, please feel free again to reach out to us for anything or if you have any event ideas, any things that, anything that's going on on your block that you'd like the organization to be aware of or you've heard of something in the news and you wanted to verify it, just know that we're here as your neighbors and then also as um, your neighborhood organization and we're here to support you. So with that, the meeting is adjourned and uh, we'll Happy see you next month. Happy Festivus, everybody. Happy Festivus. <laughs> Happy everything. Happy, Happy, Happy holidays. Holiday. Good night. Bye. All right. Thanks. Appreciate everyone.